good morning. This is like the first time I'm making a kind of video reflection thing, but I thought I wanted to blog about it, but I was like, uh, I think it's faster if I just make a video about it. So last night I was listening to this podcast by Tim Ferriss. Um, the podcast was titled Lazy and Manifesto. It's on clips that resonated with me. Um, so it talked about um, how we're always making excuses to be busy but it's all like based on our own choices to like because we want to be busy and we're afraid of not being busy because if because being busy makes us feel important and that's, and that kind of stuff and last night I was um, there was this event that was going on uh, called Geeky Girls Coffee Club or something like that uh, it's just for like science people in science technology engineering mathematics but focusing on IT people to just get together and I don't know I guess do geeky stuff um, yeah it was happening like on a Tuesday night last night and I was thinking if I should go or shouldn't go because I was like oh I could like you know work on like doing an Udemy course I've got this like Udemy course that I bought online but I haven't started it yet and I was thinking uh, maybe I should go for the next one like after I've actually started on this IT course so I have like more to talk about and more to share but but I was like yeah, you know what I'll, I should just go I guess I'll try to get out of my own head also because it's a social event like, sometimes I can be quite shy but yeah I just didn't think I would have like much to contribute at the event because I thought it would be quite serious but actually it wasn't it wasn't serious at all it was super casual and it was good like a nice small group and wasn't intimidating at all and yeah I actually like socialized and stuff <laughs> even though I'm like yeah I'm so I'm so bad at it but I'm getting I'm getting there I'm getting there at near the end of it I uh, played played the Wii which is like I haven't played a video games in so long I rarely play video games I don't have like a, any video game console but it's just nice to take some time off to like do something that you're yeah, not always you know it's a social event and yeah it was like playing with other people it wasn't like I was playing by myself I feel like I'm always relaxing but even though not always relaxing like I'm, I'm gonna start my PhD stuff but like even when I'm relaxing I feel like oh I should be like you know working on like doing a course or like working on something which is good like I really enjoy that but sometimes like I make it as an excuse to be busy but not like I've been doing it for a really long time so it's good that I've actually listened to this podcast and catch myself in the act before it gets too far like yeah when you if you listen to the clip I uh, play then you get what I'm saying um, yeah so after after that event when I was like feeling really good after I left and I was like yeah good I did something different tonight because I usually like like I usually play a podcast when I'm listening to a podcast while I'm cycling home or cycling anywhere and then then this podcast came out because it was only 15 minutes and I was like what like oh man like is that is it like is this guy talking to me like <laughs> that's exactly I mean not exactly but I totally felt like yeah tonight was about that and that totally that totally related to me yeah and so it's good like I just want to share it because I think that, that's so true and I don't know I'm sure people will benefit from it now and I know a lot of people listen to Tim Ferriss anyway but I guess for my friends like in my social group who probably don't listen to Tim Ferriss you should definitely check him out even though I don't really agree on him being in like he's being in a state of ketosis now like that's bad for you, dude. <laughs> Your body doesn't want to be in ketosis, but well, he likes to experiment with his body, so whatever. Um, yeah. So I guess like the point of this video is just uh, yeah, take time to do something you want and. It's Stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. 
lazy, a manifesto. If you live in America in the 21st century, you've probably had to listen to a lot of people tell you how busy they are. It's become the default response when you ask anyone how they're doing. Busy. So busy. Crazy busy. It is, pretty obviously, a boast disguised as a complaint. And the stock response is a kind of congratulation. That's a good problem to have, or better than the opposite. This frantic, self-congratulatory busyness is a distinctly upscale affliction. Notice it isn't generally people pulling back-to-back shifts in the ICU, taking care of their senescent parents, or holding down three minimum wage jobs they have to commute to by bus who need to tell you how busy they are. What those people are is not busy, but tired, exhausted, dead on their feet. It's most often said by people whose lamented busyness is purely self-imposed. Work and obligations they've taken on voluntarily, classes and activities they've encouraged their kids to participate in. They're busy because of their own ambition or drive or anxiety, because they're addicted to busyness and dread what they might have to face in its absence. Almost everyone I know is busy. They feel anxious and guilty when they aren't either working or doing something to promote their work. They schedule in time with friends the way 4.0 students make sure to sign up for some extracurricular activities because they look good on college applications. Yes, I know we're all very busy, but what exactly is getting done? Are all those people running late for meetings and yelling on their cell phones, stopping the spread of malaria, or developing feasible alternatives to fossil fuels, or making anything beautiful? This busyness serves as a kind of existential reassurance, a hedge against emptiness. Obviously, your life cannot possibly be silly or trivial or meaningless if you are so busy, completely booked, in demand every hour of the day. All this noise and rush and stress seem contrived to drown out or cover up some fear at the center of our lives. When you try to meditate, your brain suddenly comes up with a list of a thousand urgent items you should be obsessing about, rather than simply sit still. One of my correspondents suggests that what we're also afraid of is being left alone with ourselves. I'll say it. I am not busy. I am the laziest, ambitious person I know. Like most writers, I feel like a reprobate who does not deserve to live on any day that I do not write. But I also feel like four or five hours is enough to earn my stay on the planet for one more day. On the best ordinary days of my life, I write in the morning, go for a long bike ride and run errands in the afternoon, and see friends, read, or watch a movie in the evening. The very best days of my life are given over entirely to uninterrupted debauchery, but these are, alas, undependable and increasingly difficult to arrange. This, it seems to me, is a sane and pleasant pace for a day. And if you call me up and ask whether I won't maybe blow off work and check out the new American Wing at the Met or Ogle Girls in Central Park or just drink chilled pink minty cocktails all day long, I will say, what time? But just recently, I insidiously started because of professional obligations, to become busy. For the first time in my life, I was able to tell people with a straight face that I was too busy to do this or that thing they wanted me to do. I could see why people enjoy this complaint. It makes you feel important, sought after, and put upon. It's also an unassailable excuse for declining boring invitations, shirking unwelcome projects, and avoiding human interaction. Except that I hated actually being busy. Every morning my inbox was full of emails asking me to do things I did not want to do or presenting me with problems that I had to solve. It got more and more intolerable until finally I fled town to the undisclosed location from which I'm writing this. Here, I am largely unmolested by obligations. There is no TV. To check email, I have to drive to the library. I go a week at a time without seeing anyone I know. I've remembered about buttercups, stink bugs, and the stars. I read a lot. And I'm finally getting some real writing done for the first time in months. It's hard to find anything to say about life without immersing yourself in the world, but it's also just about impossible to figure out what that might be, or how best to say it, without getting the hell out of it again. I know not everyone has an isolated cabin to flee to, but not having cable or the internet turns out to be cheaper than having them. And nature is still technically free, even if human beings have tried to make access to it expensive. Time and quiet should not be luxury items. Idleness is not just a vacation, an indulgence, or a vice. It is as indispensable to the brain as vitamin D is to the body. 
and deprived of it, we suffer a mental affliction as disfiguring as rickets. The space and quiet that idleness provides is a necessary condition for standing back from life and seeing it whole, for making unexpected connections and waiting for the wild summer lightning strikes of inspiration. It is, paradoxically, necessary to getting any work done. Idle dreaming is often the essence of what we do, writes Thomas Pynchon in his essay on sloth. Archimedes' Eureka in the bath, Newton's apple, Jekyll and Hyde, the benzene ring. History is full of stories of inspirations that came in idle moments and dreams. It almost makes you wonder whether loafers, gold brickers, and no accounts aren't responsible for more of the world's great ideas, inventions, and masterpieces than the hardworking. The goal of the future is full unemployment so we can play. 